and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the return of Draven Overwhelm. Draven Overwhelm 2.0. This deck's been changed up just a little bit by Cabo, the person that made this deck. Um, we're making it, we're going a little bit lower to the ground, a little bit more aggressive. Um, we got an extra one drop in here, make sure we have all nine awesome one drops. Um, and now we're playing uh, Legion Grenadier, Mountain Goat, um, playing those instead of Imperial Demolitionist. Um, but so yeah, we have lots, we have great ones, great twos. All, all three of our three drops are awesome with Iron Ballista, Crescent Guardian being a 5-3 Overwhelm. Of course, Ballista, a 4-3 Overwhelm, Draven doing its thing. Um, so we get to do all that kind of stuff. No four mana cards. We don't really need them because, you know, like by four mana, we're just double spelling and things like that. Like maybe playing one drop plus Crescent Guardian kind of thing. And then Kato the Arm, Darius, and Captain Farron that finish out games. Really powerful top end. Um, we got some good spells with Noxion Fervor, Transfusion, and Pale Cascade. So just a really good, solid deck um, with with just no no holes anywhere. You know, it's just got good cards everywhere. And so we've had a lot of success with these Noxus Targon decks, and we're going to be trying um, a newer version, newer updated version of Draven Overwhelm uh, here for our first deck of the day. Hey, playing against Karma. No surprise there. Karma does one damage pretty well. Thankfully, we are pretty good against one damage. Um, I'm going to keep one Pill Cascade. I kind of want to keep both Pill Cascades. We're going to keep one. Pill Cascade is just always an all-star. So Solari Soldier is the safer way to make sure we get three damage in right now. Legion Saboteur. It would be better to play Legion Saboteur. But because of Go Hard, I think that I just want to make sure that we're getting the three damage in and play the Soldier. Where like on turn three, I can play Saboteur and then have Pill Cascade available to protect it from a Go Hard. That's what we're going to do. That's what I mean about them doing one damage very effectively. I have my orders. Okay, so no go hard. So I could just straight in attack like this and use Pill Cascade, but I'm considering just playing a Legion Grenadier since they're not doing anything else. I think I'm going to do Legion Grenadier. Get another body in play. Alright, not the best for me. I guess I didn't play around the box. I should have played around the box better. Alright, that's what our Pill Cascade was going to do. Now we're going to use a gem to heal this thing. Might as well just make them all five, five power. Fifteen. There we go. GGs. One and zero. Kato's been like MVP of these different decks we've been playing. Kato's super strong. This is gonna be a tough matchup. Um, we're going to need to be doing, you know, so basically to get through t Tom Kench to Raka, they're going to have really good blockers. We're going to need to make very powerful things. Like we don't, like going wide isn't going to be as good. Like going wide and small, we need to make very singular, large threats. So in that respect, I'm going to mulligan one Saboteur. We'll keep the one to play on turn one. And then we'll keep, then we'll have like our two mana for Pale Cascade and Draven. I have my four. You know, like some matchups, you just want like your one drops and you know be real aggressive and, and go wide and stuff like that. 
here we I think we have to um, have threats that hit really hard. So Captain Farron's a good top end card. He can just help finish the game. Do I want to have Pale Cascade available next turn? Right, so it's either play Grenadier here or pass, and then next turn play Draven with Pale Cascade. I think I do Draven with Pale Cascade. Time for the main event. To see I'm thinking that they could play a 3-mana 1-6. Okay. I was thinking they could play a 3-mana 1-6. And that we would want to... Um, we want to have Pale Cascade plus Spinning Axe to be able to um, kill the 1-6. Pale Cascade's always like MVP also. <laughs> yeah, Kawa, you think the Pale Cascade's still not necessary? For the next turn. So just attacking is not bad. Raise your weapon, Sunwood. They're probably in like protect the Tom Kench mode. I think we're gonna go one drop, one drop, have fervor available. So what's in store for me? I need time for commute, Tom. This you know. This you know. <laughs> I love the fortune croaker lines. This you know. So basically, like, whatever they block with Tom Kench, we could fervor them. Or again, I could just play another Grenadier and attack with that also. I'm not sure. Do I want to go Grenadier or do I want to fervor? I guess a Grenadier. You hoping they'll die coming in hot! Osu can sniff out any star anywhere. So the O3 cannot block the 2-1. Whatever it blocks here, it will die. They go down to four. I know we could go Spinning Axe, discard like Farron to put them down to three, and then, you know, I have Noxion for over the next turn. But, don't really think that's worth it. I, feel better than you feel better. I, of course, can Noxion for over my Legion Grenadier to do four total damage to them. If they spend six mana oh, so on cute. whatever. All right, we're going to heal you. Make you a three one. Yeah, they already wasted a hush, but they can you know they can have cards like um now we're cooking. the uh, you know the two mana heal your nexus for two. And draw a card. They can have like that kind of thing. Alright, they're tapped out. There's a good game. GG's. Draven Overwhelm 2 0. All me. And maybe those other guys. Whatever. Puppy's laying down over here just as excited as Harvey is. Scooting. Play some scoots. Alright, we'll keep Pill Cascade. Look for some cheaper cards. There we go. It's a good question for chat there. Do you guys have any suggestions on how to overcome ranked anxi an anxiety? Anxiety. There we go. I guess one thing. One thing about that is probably experience. You know, like, the the more you play and the more you win and the more you lose, you kind of get used to both winning and losing and just kind of realize that... Um, okay, so one, I'm going to make this trade here. I know this isn't, like, the best trade for me, 
but because of their they're playing you know, like with their combat tricks like the the one man to make things tough but then also because they're playing a vanguard bannerman and they're a bannerman deck i want to just make the trade uh, but anyway um yeah, like the more the more you kind of play and get get used to that kind of stuff, like the more you'll you know the more you kind of get used to winning, get used to losing, and get used to like the the variance that happens throughout games. Um, so maybe that's something. Maybe it could just be maybe it could be like an experience thing that could help out. Um, which I know that's better for the long term, not necessarily like the short term. But basically, realize that um, there's not too much negatives as far as ranking goes because let's say you are at let's say you're currently at um gold one you know if you're gold one even if you lose a ton like let's say you lose 30 matches in a row you just go to gold four you know you can't like continue to rank down or anything you're gonna stay in your uh ranking you know like whenever you're in gold in any in any spot in gold you're gonna continue to stay in a spot in gold um, I'm going to use a gem here. Basically because I want Pale Cascade to be turned on. And I didn't really want to use Spinning Axe. Nice permanent. My kind of party. Buff there. Um. Cool. Got my fortune out of here. So I don't know. Hopefully that helps. Um, basically, just realize that you know it's a game and, and you can't. There's not too much negatives. You can't really rank down that much, and uh, all all that can happen is that you go up basically, even if you lose a good amount. And really, the the best and or only way to get over it is to continue to play and continue to um you know learn and i guess that's the other thing is really focus on learn you know focus on like what's happening in the games and learning and improving in the games and don't really focus on wins and losses like there'll be times like where i play you know for, for stream it's a little different but if i'm not playing for stream i don't really even pay that close attention to my wins and losses to be honest i'm just focusing on the games and what's happening in them um and uh how to, how to improve in them and, and things like that and it's kind of more about the process than than the result i guess that's that's the thing to do is focus on the process not the result Man, I want to play Kato, but now getting another Draven. I can go Iron Ballista and Draven. Demacian needs heroes. The party has arrived. So hopefully, out of all that stuff, hopefully something helps out. Got axes, need victims. I should pro I should be probably casting this somewhere. But no, I guess they would just block with those things. Alright, so this will put them down to seven. Now we're cooking. I'm using this other spinning axe. Because I'm gonna, I want to level up Draven, so I'm gonna use the spinning axe. It's just whether I discard a spinning axe or a gem. I'm not sure. I figured with Draven striking, we'll get another spinning axe anyway. So I'll just, you know, keep gem. So it's something a little bit different, so it you know, gives me some options. Uh, okay, I should have discarded the gem because then if I would have... Because then I could still have a spinning axe in case they would rangers resolve. I got you. I want to play Darius. Their 
Pride will cost them. Scouting ahead. <clears throat> Alright, cool. No, like, repost. You know, I'd have to be worried about repost. GG's. Darius and the captain. Close it out. Do you do you think like worse of me? Do you think that you know like from your perspective watching me play, if I you know make a mistake and lose a game, do you think oh man that that person is uh, really bad now they they just made a mistake and lost a game? They they should be ashamed. Like is that how you is that how you feel watching it? And if if not, then you shouldn't put that kind of pressure on yourself, either. You shouldn't feel okay. Well, if I make a mistake, then I need, then I'll be really ashamed of it. So you shouldn't put that kind of pressure on yourself. Because we all lose, we all make mistakes. It's, it's impossible to never make a mistake and never lose, <laughs> you know, it's just impossible. Okay, so we could play Precious Pet, but I kind of want to keep Noxion Fervor available right here. I'd rather it be Pill Cascade. And the card I do not want to see is Petty Officer, right? Because, like, 3-1 Petty Officer matches up really well against 4-3. But that's why, like, I would probably, tra you know, Transfusion over here to try to pump up the, the Ballista. Okay, so that was worst case scenario. Two cards that just trade for my two cards. We're just going to be down a card. And so, yeah, we just traded. We just traded Transfusion for their Death's Hand, but then we also got extra damage on them. We need some top end. We're gonna need it. Kato, Darius, Captain Farron. Cool. We'll take that. I know it's a few turns before we play Captain Farron, but I will take that. Okay, yeah, so you barely barely play normals, you just basically only play expeditions and gauntlets. They're I mean ranked is just like it's just like expeditions and gauntlets. Um like there's not really any there's no there's no difference to it. So yeah, I think I think you're just too worried about what your um rank says and um and everything and um Yeah, basically it's just gonna be you know, your rank's gonna be your rank. It's you can only go up if if you play. You know, won't can't go up if you don't. Basically, you just play ranked games and just don't even don't even look at your rank. Just ignore that your rank is even there. If I block Swain's a three one, and my thing's dead. This is a difficult decision. I don't play that much off stream. I do sometimes, but I, I don't do that much. Basically, because I do play so much, 
of course, on stream every day, playing about five hours every day. I don't want to get burned out too much. You know, like, that's, that's something that I'd be worried about a little bit. And I don't want that to happen. So I don't, I don't play, you know, some, some days I really feel like playing and then I, I do uh, play more off stream on, on those days, but for the most part, six, eight, 10, 11, this puts me down to two. I'm always up for a round or two, eyes open. GG's. Alright, three and one. Alright, playing some more scouts. Did get, you know, pretty fortunate with our other scouts win. We had a real nice hand. Let's see if that happens again. We're gonna keep one pill cascade to go along with the goat. No one mana card though. I wanted one of our nine one drops to to be able to lead with. Hopefully we find one right here. Yeah, they played, yes, our last opponent played that very well all the way from turn, you know, turn three to the end of the game. They, they sequenced very well the whole time. All right, no one drop, unfortunately. Seems like the perfect time to draw the one drop. So I, I kind of want to go Saboteur into Ballista because then I have Pale Cascade available. Where if I go, you know, Mountain Goat now, Pale, or Ballista next turn, I don't have Pale Cascade. And they can block my 2-1, but then we get to fail cascade, and then if they have sharp sight, then that's a bummer. Cool. Dragon says your rank doesn't say how good you are. I was the same way for a while, but eventually I found Todd. Started watching him on Twitch, and eventually broke out of my comfort zone. Just takes time. Yep, there we go. It just takes time. But yeah, the rank rank does not mean how good you are. It's it's more of a how much do you play than how good you are. And that's why my rank's usually pretty high, because I play a bunch. We'll go with the Mountain Goat. I don't want them, you know, challenging my Draven. I guess the problem with going Mountain Goat over Ballista was that if I would have gone Ballista, then this turn I could go Mountain Goat and Draven. Time for the main event. All right, we'll have Saboteur as well, and then Fervor. Who does not know the name Laurent? Explosives Prime. Okay. Let's do do that. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so that Ranger's Resolve means that I have to use, you know, I have to use Spinning Axe. We could discard Captain Farron, because it's, it's going to be another couple of turns before we're able to play Captain Farron. Captain Farron is so good. I kind of want to discard a Ballista. You know, like, next turn next turn was, like, perfect to be able to play Ballista, Ballista. Double Ballista, right? But I feel like there's, there's definitely a world where they're able to defeat double Ballista. I feel like it's going to be more difficult for them to overcome... Um, Captain Farron in a few turns. 
Yud! It's almost two years now. Thank you so much, Yud. <laughs> Thumbnails, they are ready. Thank you, Yud. You the best. Demacian needs heroes. Is it possible they don't attack? Like, I want to play Kato, but they could challenge Kato with Valor, then challenge Kato with Protege. I guess that's not bad if they do that. We'll take the the two for one. Run them through. Just like hunting uh -huh. Alright, so they will trade Quinn and one of these things for Kato. It's like Quinn and Valor, so you know basically just trade straight up on the five drops. Which I think I'm good with. Nice to punch you. And obviously Protégé kills Saboteur. So if I block here, they have nothing and I lose these two. And so we're left with Draven with these two cards in hand and they're left with just three you cards in hand. I know Kato represents a lot a lot of damage and everything, but considering I am looking, I'm staring down Captain Farron in two turns, and this is keeping me at 17 and them like having to try to kill me before that, I just don't really see how they're doing that. So I think this is a good block. Yeah, the KDA board's cool. It has this this little switch over here is a switch between three KDA songs that you get to choose. Darius works out pretty well. Up on down to two. Looks like too little for Captain Farron. Valor. Hey, what's up, Bruce? Doing good? Alright, can you do 17 damage this turn? Didn't think so. Alright, GG's. We're going 4 and 1 with Draven Overwhelm. Our grow. Good at deck. We didn't get to play against the ramp decks, but I have found that those ramp matchups um, really aren't so bad with how um, with how much damage we can do and then having like Captain Farron at the top end. Um, <clears throat> we've we've had success against the the ramp decks in the past because you know we get to get out early and then even against avalanche having like transfusion and pale cascade as good things against avalanche and then of course these three drops don't die to avalanche um so yeah we've had success against the ramp decks in the past we didn't play them uh now but yeah that's a, a good four one this is a a good deck this would definitely be one that yeah if i was just focused on ranking up i would love playing this deck over and over because just like the Tarek draven and the Draven over one we played before, we kind of combined those two for this one. Put some good things that we had in the Tarek Draven deck into here. Um, <clears throat> you know, adding in like Transfusion, Mountain Goat, that kind of stuff. Yeah, this deck's, this deck's solid. And um, fast games. You know, this was for us 41 minutes for the five games. Um, so, you know, some good fast games. And uh, yeah, just nothing, nothing too fancy. Just you, know, you just smush them. So there we go. Um, those of y'all watching later on YouTube, hit that like button over there. And of course, feel free to leave those comments as well. Love to see those. But thank you so much for watching some Draven Overwhelm, and I'll see you for the next video.